We begin today with a look at how we're getting around or not getting around in New Jersey. That means rails and roads and bridges and tunnels. Colleen Wilson is the transportation reporter for the record and is in the middle of a series on NJ Transit, the good, the bad and the ugly of it. We got a chance to talk to her about it earlier. Colleen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on with us. Thanks for having me. So it's called the New Jersey Transit Reform Report Card. Any reforms landing anywhere? Some more than others. No, there definitely have been boxes that have been checked, um, but there's still some things that remain to be done. You know, I think probably the most, uh, the, the biggest revelation from the series so far, which still has two more installments, uh, by the way, in the mm -hmm. next two weeks. Um, but probably the biggest revelation was that the chief ethics officer whose role is supposed to be independent, much like the uh, customer advocate was designed to be answers to the board. Um, the person who's currently filling that uh, is also the chief compliance officer and essentially works within the agency. So, you know, the headline for that story was something along the lines of, uh, you know, two jobs and two masters. Hmm. And so I think that was, um, you know, something we wanted to highlight up front. And that was the first series, the first uh, installment of the series. So, you know, we've been and last time I saw you, we were at a press conference announcing another big real estate project that involved New Jersey Transit uh, and some private developers, which may be good for development efforts. But is there anything that commuters get out of that? This is the Hoboken Terminal uh, project. Yeah, the Hoboken Terminal. There was one in, in uh, Middlesex the week after that. Sure. I mean, you know, I think any kind of investment in um, infrastructure, New Jersey Transit's infrastructure is a good thing. You know, the Hoboken uh, press conference was about that, you know, big development going on there and, and the other, uh, you know, improvements being made to the station. But they've actually have a lot of other ongoing projects that aren't as flashy. You know, they're trying to work the electrical. They're trying to make it more resilient. Um, you know, uh, so th there are a lot of things going on that I, even if commuters might not see those kind of improvements, you know, you're not going to see the electrical improvements. But if your train's running there and it's getting there on time, then, you know, that's uh, that's a good thing. So, you know, hopefully, um, you know, commuters will understand that and, and see that there are some good things going on there. So the governor has, is famous for saying we're going to fix NJ Transit if it kills me. He's still alive. Are there improvements that people can point to and say, yes, we give him a reprieve? Um, I don't know if I'd say it's a reprieve, no. uh, but I do think there are improvements that are are happening. You know, I mean, we, you just mentioned, you know, the construction. That's probably their biggest, um, you know, investments right now are in capital. Uh, they have four billion dollars worth of projects uh, going on right now, which is vastly uh, increased from the, the prior administration. So that's definitely something that's that's good. And, and those, you, you know, you won't really feel those changes for some years while those projects get, you know, get finished. Um, but, you know, train cancellations have not uh, considerably improved. Um, you know, even the chain, the reason for those cancellations um, are, have changed over the years. So while it's kind of like whack-a-mole, you know, you, <laughs> if you, you hire the engineers, but now all the trains are breaking down because they're old. So, but the lag time on, on ordering new trains can be, it, it takes years for those to come in. So um, there, there's, you know, there's still stuff to, that needs to be done. And um, it's, there's, as, as the, the governor famously, or maybe infamously likes to say, we're not spiking any footballs. So um, I, I, I believe that's probably the right, uh, you know, sentiment. You touched on this commuter advocate. It's been two years, uh, over two years now, that that position has been empty. We talked to uh, NJ Transit. We talked to the governor's office. They say nobody ever asked about that. But just because nobody ever asked about it, does that mean it's not important? Well, I'm not sure where that information is coming from as far as what the governor's saying, but people are asking about it, certainly at the board meetings. You know, I hear it every month when I'm there. Um, and so um, we're all hoping, I think, to get an update on where that stands, you know, in uh, a week when they have their next board meeting. Um, but no, people care. They it, this, this position has been given more attention than, than any other element of that reform law. So I think it's very important to people. I mean, they want to be heard. They want to have someone to go to who can, you know, help make changes on this system. Um, and 
it's 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 the law. So I think you know that just because maybe the perception is that people don't care. I think if you're really you know on the ground in the field, you know talking to people, um, they they're looking for that position. They want it to be filled and don't understand why it hasn't happened yet. One of the things that's been talked about going back to the, the previous administration is NJ Transit using capital dollars to pay for operating costs. The, the governor, this current governor, said they were going to stop doing that. Have they stopped doing that? Far from it. Uh, th you know, this is a 30 plus year practice um, yeah. that the, the agency or, and the governor's budgets have perpetuated. Um, so it's unclear why that has not become more of a priority. You know, you can talk to pretty much anyone uh, in the in, at those meetings, those board members, pretty much anyone in the field um, will tell you that 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 is a bad practice. And frankly, if given the good things that are going on, particularly again from the capital side, um, if you want to sustain those kind of improvements um, and and keep you know making the right things happen, you have to have that money. You cannot keep cannibalizing. Uh, your 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 capital fund in the hundreds of millions of dollars every year. Um, so that is certainly a problem that's going to exist as long as that continues. So getting off the rails and getting onto the roads, it seems that um, road widening is is all the rage this year. Uh, there are some projects in South Jersey uh, and and one that's caused a lot of controversy is the widening of the turnpike expen uh, extension through Jersey City. What can you tell us? about what's happening down in South Jersey, uh, and also for those of us who live in North Jersey um, and in Jersey City, uh, about that road widening that started at $5 billion and is now $10 billion? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, people are pretty upset about that. Uh, they're tying that uh, increase to inflation um, right. and supply chain issues, um, although, I don't, that's not very convincing to me, uh, to be honest, but, um, you know, I, it, people want to know why we're widening when on the other side of the river, they're talking about measures to, to reduce congestion through the, their tolling program that, that's been proposed. So um, kind of some conflicting, you know, elements there. And it's conflicting as well, I think, for the governor who has, you know, billed himself as an environmentalist um, and, who says that electric cars will, you know, help eliminate, um, you know, the the environmental concerns with the widening, um, but people aren't convinced by that, and uh, they I don't. Mean, wanna, the, the bottom yeah, line to that is they're going to take, they're going to widen the approach, but there's still a finite number of ways to get into Manhattan, and it, it defies logic. How are you going to get more cars into the same amount of tunnels faster? Sure. And what the turnpike will tell you is that they think that the the most impact from that project will be to relieve congestion going toward the ports and not so much. It's not necessarily designed or intended to help relieve congestion into the city or that it would be used in that way. Um, so they, they would say that this is going to help with as far as freight cargo um, in and out of the port area. All right, Colleen Wilson, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Thanks for having me.